what will a win or a loss mean for Kirby Smart? Now I've got uh, I've got some ideas and whatnot, but I'll I'll let you have the floor first. I don't think a loss means anything. I mean, a guy that's bullied you and beaten you your entire career so far, it, it, you know, it, it just bullied you and beat you again. Like there's, I don't, I don't think that matters or means anything. It didn't change anything for him. Right. At some point in time, would it one day convince all these kids that are going to Georgia that no matter what kind of talent we have here, we're always going to lose those other guys. So why keep picking Georgia? Like other people have beaten him but Georgia hasn't. So why are we trusting it in Kirby? That could be the only thing, but even then, I don't, I don't think that's a real possibility, but I don't think it matters. A win, however, changes everything because yeah. they, they have been the only team to, to, to beat uh, uh, Alabama in recruiting the last couple of years. They're the only school that has gotten a number one recruiting class over Alabama ever in the last like five years. So, that it it solidifies him and and it puts him in a place where you know it's been 40 years since you know Georgia's won a championship everybody else almost in the SEC has had their turn especially all the big boy programs have have all kind of rotated through there and 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 all gotten gotten their rings in that in that you know 40 year span and and they're the one big boy left you know wanting right. so I, I think it changes a lot for him so, a lot of the uh, the powerhouse programs just in the southeast, right? Clemson, Miami, Florida State, et cetera, They have all had theirs. Well, I mean, hell, it, you're talking. We're yeah. going forty years. You're talking Georgia Tech's had theirs. Yeah, like, yeah, Georgia Tech in nineteen ninety. We're not talking. We're not just talking LSU, Auburn. You know, you know, Bama, uh, Tennessee. Those teams. We're we're talking teams that are in your state that are significantly smaller than you. Now that was a long, long time ago, but still. Yeah. I mean it was just nine years after since you've last since you've last won, they've won. Yes. And there's no reason for that. <laughs> no, you're hundred percent right. Auburn, LSU, Florida, Tennessee. I mean you keep yeah. naming it and, and, and yes. And ten and Tennessee, Florida, and Auburn are gotta be the three that stick in your crawl. Because oh, yes. those are your biggest rivals as a team. We can say Georgia Tech is an in-state rival, but they don't play in your conference. It ain't the same since they've left the SEC left the SEC years yeah, ago. E- even still, it, that means all four of Georgia's yes, biggest all, rivals. All four of your rivals. Not including won, Alabama, which I think is a, a more modern day rivalry, right? But that's not a rivalry. That's just not a rival. You no, can't just, you can't just say we're the two best teams and so now we're a rival. Like agreed. that's just not it, it has to be more than that. Agreed. You play those other four teams every year. That matters. I don't believe that a loss means anything for Kirby. I, I, all all it exactly. will mean is there are <laughs> the people that support that program will continue to doubt him. And that's it. Uh, at the end of the day, Nick Saban is over 70 years old. He will eventually retire. People yep. do not live forever. At Joe Paterno and Bobby Bowden are the only ones that have coached into their 80s, and those two fell off towards the end. Right? That, well, they stopped coaching well into their 80s. Like, yeah. Jimbo Fisher was the coach that ran everything at Florida State for I don't know, seven years, nah, like, six years. No, nah, it wasn't. It wasn't that long. It was four ish somewhere around okay. there before he All took right. over. Yeah. But it was a, it was a significant amount of time before, you know, that Bobby was just a face. Yes. Like, like him and Joe Pa weren't X's and O in it. Okay. They were <laughs> racking up stats. Yes. A hundred percent. They were racking up wins and Nick Saban is still doing the X's and O's. He is still recruiting he's he's doing everything at a high level oh, to yeah. this day and well, eventually there's a big difference between 70 and 85 Gary. oh agreed 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 i mean there's a substantial difference but, but that's that. what i'm saying is eventually like kirby smart is incredibly young right he is still 10 years younger today than nick saban was when he started at alabama so he's got a long long career ahead of him uh, but this is if you were ever going to catch Alabama, this would be the year to do it. They are the worst version of a Nick Saban team that they have had there in in many, many years. They are incredibly yeah. young. It, so. There's a reason Georgia was a huge favorite going into the SEC title game because we had 12 games of data for both these teams, and Alabama looked worse than Alabama's ever looked, and and Georgia looked better than Georgia's ever looked. Yes. And in... And, and, and there's a reason now 
you give Nick, you know, a, an extra week and, and all this time. I, I don't know. I can't, exp- I can't explain. I can't explain the national title game because it just uh, the didn't. SEC title game. Yeah. The SEC <laughs> title game because it didn't match anything. It didn't match anything that we've seen for 12 weeks. I, I will tell you, so this will play into into the next, you know, the last question regarding this game. Uh, what does it mean for college football overall? And I think what it means is this is just another data point that you have to have that NFL superstar quarterback to be able to win a national title. If Alabama uh, wins and Georgia loses, I think that's what that means. Because I'm going to disagree with that right now. Okay. Just I, I, would love, that. I would love to hear your reasoning behind it. Well, because if 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 Stetson Bennett plays fine, and this is a low scoring defensive slog, but but you know either both quarterbacks look bad or both quarterbacks look good, that and, and, and Georgia ends up losing this game, then then that doesn't mean they didn't have that NFL quarterback, so they can't win. Like I just I just refuse to believe that because I just I I think this Georgia team is really really good. Okay, I, I and agree. I think with they you. can win in spite of him. Here's the thing: if Georgia wins, then then what you just said gets definitively crushed, right? Because there's right. no way on earth Stetson Bennett is a big time NFL quarterback. Uh, correct, that, and that's what I'm saying is that is the the narrative coming out of this. If Kirby Smart and that massive that defensive might be a, front, that might be a loses. narrative, but it's not true. It's not accurate. It's not right. You don't have to have that guy. And also remember, Alabama had. That guy and that guy hasn't translated into the NFL really good to be that superstar NFL quarterback yet. Agreed, agreed. He so, he is a so let's so, be real careful about that. They those guys get drafted early a lot, and and then they and then they're fair to middling. Okay, right. So what so what does that mean? Do you think that there is so so basically, we don't know that they translate. Necessarily, right? Uh, Tua has had flashes of brilliance in Miami, but he's also faltered a little bit. Mac Jones, no, no, kind of no, same no, thing. No, don't, don't gloss over that. You can't say he's had flashes of brilliance and then faltered a little. He's been the definition of mediocre in the NFL. Right. Would you say the same thing about uh, Jalen Hurts? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I'd say the same thing. Uh, would you say the same thing about Mac Jones right now? Absolutely. Okay. Now, there are a ton. The definition of mediocre between all of them. There are a ton of and then NFL scouts. There was scouts. a decade between them and like AJ McCarron, which was the last Alabama guy that came out that that got an right, NFL right, right. job for a long time, and he wasn't worth a shit. <laughs> I'm saying that this is a a recent trend, right? If you go back through, yeah, take the, Alabama quarterbacks, and your quarterback will be mediocre. But the, the <laughs> that's not what I'm getting at. Take twenty, take an LSU quarterback. We 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 don't have many. We got one, but he's pretty much a superstar. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, so 2020, you had Mac Jones win a national title, right? And he yeah. first round, he's now taking the Pats to the playoff. Obviously, that's not yeah, Mac Jones, he didn't but take the Pats to the playoffs. It, right, agreed. I, I'm saying that he is the starting quarterback of a playoff team, right? Okay. I, I'm not saying Jaylen that he's Hurts good. Is the starting quarterback of a playoff team too. <laughs> I'm saying he was a first round NFL quarterback. If he wasn't a good NFL, if he wasn't, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? If he wasn't expected to be a good NFL quarterback, they wouldn't have taken him in the first round, right? Yes, they would have uh, because he played at Alabama. I don't know that I buy it. The last, okay. the last NFL well, we've got, quarterback. Well, we've got we've got three in the NFL right now, okay? And in five years, we'll see how many we still have. This is this was not supposed to get into an Alabama know, quarterback but, debate. But, but what I'm saying, but you think you think that because these guys are stars in college, it equates to being stars in the pros, and it just doesn't. No, no, and you I, think you have to have this star. A quarterback is the most important position in football. Yes. Okay. So, yes, the team that has the better quarterback, if you have a star quarterback and the other team doesn't, then the other team is at a significant disadvantage. But it doesn't mean that team can't beat you. Zach Calzada led AM team beat Alabama. Correct. And he, like, was completely, like, inept the entire second half because of an injury. Okay. Came out of several series. Yeah. And then had to drag his ass back in, injured, to come back. Okay? So you're talking about a very mediocre quarterback in college. Can beat somebody. Agreed. 100%. Is it hard? Yes. But this is fucking hard. It's hard to win Yes, it's very hard. I'm I'm looking at the last however many national title winning quarterbacks, right? 2020, Mac Jones. 2019 was Joe Burrow. 2018 was Trevor Lawrence. 2017, uh, basically two, uh, because Jalen Hurts, didn't do anything in that first half. 2016, Deshaun Watson. 
Now, 2015 was Jake Coker, and that was the last one that did not, he was not expected to be a big time NFL quarterback, right? Well, that he the, wasn't the highly is, ranked. Is all those guys are expected to be, and one of them, Deshaun Watson, has proven that he is definitively a star if he can ever get back on the field. He may be the and next I think, Dolphins. And I, think, and I think Joe is going to be a star. And I think the rest of those guys are just dudes. And the, there's a chance that they play in really stable systems. And so they'll probably have long careers, but I don't know if they're ever going to be great. Yeah. I think I think what we saw from Mac Jones this year is what we're going to see. Yeah. Like, I don't, no, I don't know how much better he's getting. I don't know. That, I don't know how much better Tua is going to get. Like, Tua has flashes of brilliance. And he gives the ball to the other team all the time. So, yeah. no, you're uh, you're not wrong about that. And he holds it too long, so he gets sacked in the NFL a lot, which is going to mean he's going to have a hard time getting healthy or staying healthy. And then people are going to say, "Well, if he just would have been healthy, he could have been a lot better." Well, that's just not true. <laughs> it's like, are we sure about that? Are we sure about that? So, no, you're right. You're right. It's um, the most important. It's a, it's a really important position. And does, if you've uh, got a better quarterback, then it's easier for you to win. Does an Alabama win mean anything different than what it already has going forward? No. I don't no. think it does. If you, have, if you have all the best players and you have all the best coaches, then you're going to beat everybody all the time. That's kind of what it seems Kirby like. Kirby Smart has equal best players, except for at the most important position. Overall talent, he doesn't have the three best players. Right. I would think the three, if you were drafting the players, and I'm just doing this from the top of my head, Alabama's got number one, number two, number three draft pick. The next 12 might be Georgia's, but it doesn't matter. And then all the best coaches are on the Alabama sideline. I mean, you got NFL playoff winning coaches. Now I'm yeah. not talking about NFL scrubs that got fired. All right. These guys, your OC got fired because he was a shitty GM. All right. Yeah. Not, not because he was a bad coach. He was one of the best coaches. Hey, by the way, let in me all the NFL. Let me let me hijack that conversation right quick. Uh, Bill O'Brien, of course, it's uh, been reported that he is going to interview for the Jaguars' head coaching job. His best friend is Doug Marone. You think he brings Doug Marone back as like a an offensive line coach or an OC or something with him to the Jags? I don't. I don't know that he couldn't. I think that Doug Marone probably has a decent relationship with the family and it's not the same GM. I, I think that fired him, you know, it, I think all relationships could be mended. I also think that it could be a thing where the Jags hire him and say, we don't want Doug back. And you say, all right, yeah. Doug, you now are going to be the OC at Alabama. Yeah. And that's, what's going to happen. More than likely. More than likely. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.